Happy Friday, everybody. It's Boyers Not Ballers, episode 10. I'm CJ. And I'm Henry. We got a jam-packed, fun Friday show. This felt like a long week, Henry, so I think we should really have some fun today to lead into the weekend. It was a long week for you. Let's put it that way. How... <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. I I have nothing related to me to talk about Celtics wise. If that's what you're getting at. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, What we are going to talk about though, the NBA released their second half schedule. We're going to break that all down for you. We're also going to talk about the Toronto Raptors, a team we haven't talked much about. They're in fifth place in the East. They're in the playoffs right now. What's that like? (laughs) Oh my God. And was that a pain we're... laugh? Was that a pain laugh? What? No. We're also going to talk about something that I know nothing about because I'm a boomer. Uh, NBA Top Shot? What? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, you're, you're old 24-year-old ass. Can't hang with us young 23-year-olds understanding the new modern technology of Top Shot. So Literally, I, I can't. So I'm going to need you to explain it. To <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a little bit of a rundown on that new phenomenon and how it's kind of blowing up really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. We need to we need to align ourselves with them because we're trying to blow up really quickly as well. Um, speaking of blowing up quickly, Joey freaking Swass is in the house. That was not a fat joke. <laughs> <laughs> it meant that he's very talented and he people get excited for Joey. It was a compliment. He'll be in here to do a new segment called Heaters and Freezers. We'll also do Friday Fits on YouTube and on IGTV. So if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, and potentially iHeartRadio in the future, but not yet. Friday Fits will always be on our YouTube page and IGTV. So check that out within the full episode. And finally, Henry, it's Friday. So you know what that means, right? Oh, do I? Oh, does he? It's three cheers time, baby. Cheers to the freaking weekend. We got beers. We got boyers. We got fun. You ready to rock and roll, buddy? Let's do it. Hit it. Henry, I'm doing fine. Um, I'm moving in two days, moving to New York Congratulations. City. Congratulations. Thank you. So we're going to the Big Apple. Uh, I'm about to lose my real person job. That's fine. We're fine. And uh, my grandmother yesterday, or no, two days ago, told me that my beard looks ugly. And because I have a beard, it looks like I don't care. So I might shave my face. I don't know. Oh, my God. No. Oh, come on. You look really good with a beard. I think you could rock the beard. I can't really rock a beard. You can. Listen, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I, I appreciate the compliment, first of all. I don't know what I'm going to do with it ultimately, but other than those things, there's nothing else in my life. There's nothing to complain about. There's nothing going on. I am picture perfect. Okay. Nothing to talk about here. How about you, my friend? I'm, I'm doing really well. Uh, I've been doing a little bit better since yesterday, since they released the second half of the NBA schedule, Mm -hmm. we get to see the second half matchups. They released the first half knowing that there would be games canceled because of COVID and now they released the second half. So we're really excited to break that down for you guys, highlight some top matchups and who's got the toughest and weakest schedules. Yeah, first quick question to you, Henry. Do you think, because the goal for the NBA is that every team plays the 72 games, will they hit that goal? I would lean no. I think they'll get really close. There'll probably be some at 72, some at like 68, 69-ish. But I don't think all 30 teams are going to be able to hit that 72 benchmark just because like, just because of all the stuff that's up in the air. Like there are teams that have 39 games left and the Memphis Grizzlies have 45 games left. Like there's just so much still up in the air. Yeah. I, that's, I, listen, I think also a lot of like states are now allowing fans. So I know in Massachusetts, for example, the garden can start having sands up, start having fans in the stands. I said fans the first time, right? Yeah, you said fans, and then you said stands the next time. It's It's been a long week. (laughs) Um, You can start having fans in the stands end of March. So I'll be intrigued to see fan presence, if that negatively impacts teams or positively. Um, We'll see what happens with that. But first off, Henry, you're our big stats guy. You're our numbers guy here. (laughs) Whenever you see a schedule, the first thing all the nerds go is, strength of schedule, who's got it? So I'll go to you. What are you seeing strength of schedule versus, you know, what are you seeing? 
Okay, so the weakest schedule left is the Utah Jazz. Now, do they mm. have some matchups against some pretty poor teams? Yes, they've got three more matchups against the Houston Rockets. They've got two matchups against the Timberwolves, I believe. But the reason why they're the weakest, they have the weakest strength of schedule is because they don't have to play the Utah Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> and the Jazz are kind of running away with the best record in the NBA right now. I think in a normal 82 game season, they would be on pace to win 66 or 67 games. I think that's how it would break down, which is an amazing number. Oh, yeah. I think only 20, 20 something teams have ever gotten to that. So they have the weakest schedule. Brooklyn has a really weak schedule. That mostly has to do with the fact that the Eastern Conference, by and large, is basically all hovering Blech. right around 500. Bad. Just so bad. Yeah, there's there's like 12 teams in the Eastern Conference that right around 500. Maybe like 10, actually. There's like 10 teams in the Eastern Conference hovering right around 500. So not a lot of great teams on the schedule for, for uh, Brooklyn. Then we also got Charlotte with a pretty bad schedule. Dallas, Miami, and Atlanta in terms of teams that are competing for the playoffs, those have some of the weaker schedules. Again, I'm not going to say this is collusion or fixing or anything, but like, I'm pretty sure the NBA, if they could, would make it so that Luka doesn't have to go through a play-in tournament to get into the playoffs. They would like the Mavericks to probably get a top six seed. Mm. And again, not tinfoil hat conspiratorial, mm. but I'm not saying that's purposeful. But Dallas having one of the weakest schedules remaining is is pretty advantageous to them, which also has to do with the fact which why they've started off so poorly is because they had a really hard schedule. They played a lot of good teams. Mm -hmm. And they only have to play the Jazz once, the Clippers and the Lakers only each twice. So Dallas, look out. They might be a team that might try and catapult out of that 9-10 playing range to maybe challenging a team like a San Antonio or maybe even a Portland for the six, five seeds. Cause mm. it looks like the top four seeds are going to be Phoenix uh, Lakers, Clippers and Utah in whatever order that is. And Atlanta, again, they've also had a pretty tough schedule the first half of the season. So it makes sense. That the rest of their schedule is weak. And uh, Miami again, also have had a tough schedule. They've been underperforming expectations. So now for the hardest schedule remaining, the hardest schedule remaining goes to the Orlando Magic. Oh. <laughs> and I feel really bad for the Magic because outside of Memphis, probably no team has been more hurt by COVID than the Orlando Magic. Mm -hmm. And I thought they would be a playoff team this year. They just, they've missed too many guys. Cole, the fact that Cole Anthony has to like shoulder such a load for them as a rookie, you, there are very few good teams that have rookies playing extremely pivotal roles and yeah that that's why orlando is where they are right now they're just on the outside looking into the playoffs right now but hey who knows they they could find their way in there i'm not not saying it's impossible houston's got a really weak schedule i mean really strong schedule coming up houston was a great story i think the christian wood injury compounded with the fact that the, they, they just can't really score that well well it's starting to catch up to them have they won a game since christian wood got hurt no, they have not. <laughs> oh, and that is a tough, tough, uh, tough stat right there. So. Yeah. And then a couple other teams with tougher schedules, the Lakers, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Lakers have a think, tough schedule. You think the league would, you know, try to help LeBron. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> uh, and then in terms of bubble teams that might need a weaker or stronger schedule in order to make the playoffs, San Antonio, New Orleans, Portland, and Memphis have the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th toughest schedules remaining. Mm. So those are all teams that, especially with Portland, we expect to make the playoffs. But New Orleans, San Antonio, Memphis are all teams right in that play-in tournament range, yeah. battling with the Golden States and the, the Sacramentos. And it's really interesting to see that they have some of the tougher schedules remaining. Memphis has to play Utah three times. Oh, boy. Yeah, and... Memphis is good, and but then again, they don't have anybody who has a prayer of matching up with Gobert. No. So that's I, interesting. That's interesting. I think it's not really a death sentence, but with for those teams, it's going to be a lot tougher for them to overcome their strong schedule as opposed to a team like Sacramento, who has is in the bottom third of strength of schedule, like a Dallas who's in the bottom third of strength of schedule. Yeah. So we'll see. You talked about Golden State because those teams that are 
on the bubble there might have to go up against a Golden State. Mm -hmm. Something weird about the Golden State schedule to end the year, their last six games of the season are all at home. So if you're a conspiratorial person, (laughs) which we're not saying we are, to close out six games in a row at home, I mean, you're probably going five and one, four and two, or six and oh. Like that's that's a big break right there. So that adds to the difficulty of those teams that have a more difficult schedule trying to kind of break through to get into those final couple spots or the play-in tournament. I mean, the play-in tournament is scheduled right now, May 18th to the 21st, and I'm excited for it. I think it's a great idea, Mm -hmm. and it's going to be fun watching basketball that is competitive. It has, like, professional basketball with a college flair. And for me, watching my Boston Celtics probably be in it. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. Are there any uh, games, Henry? That just like caught your eye. I'll give you two for me. And they're both early games. Well, there's three days I want to talk about really quickly. March 24th, a little bit after the All-Star game, Nets Jazz. You talked about the Nets and Jazz. They have easier schedules. They're the top teams basically in their respective conferences. You can argue Philly's right there in the East as well. That's going to be quite the matchup, especially with the way Utah has been shooting the three ball against the Nets who can also shoot the three ball and frankly just score. I'm excited for that. A week later, Sixers Nuggets, which at first I was like, that's whatever. But then I remembered, oh yeah, it's Embiid, Jokic, MVP (laughs) candidates, big guys, cool dudes. Um, That should be a ton of fun to watch. Funny guys too. They're funny. Funny dudes. Good point. Funny. We like funny guys. We try to be funny guys. And then finally, on the NBA schedule day that caught my eye, May 16th, on May 16th, Every NBA team at this point is scheduled to play. That like never happens. So being able to watch that much basketball where every team is playing, the standings are going to be like the Amtrak notice at Penn Station. There's going to be shuffling up and down. It's going to be like in the greatest game ever played, like how they used to keep track of golf, like flying all over the place, (laughs) shocks going up and down. I mean, teams that are the ninth seed could be the fifth seed by the end of that day. So I'm very excited. May 16th. I will be, I don't know what day of the week it is, either podcasting or sitting on my couch watching hoops, and I can't wait. So those I'm going to be days glued to League eye. Pass. I'm going to be absolutely oh. glued to League Pass. I'm, I'm, I'm making out my goal right now. I'm staking, staking my claim. I'm going to watch at least a little bit of every single game on May 16th. And write you guys, that down. Write you that guys down. can hold me to that. <laughs> write that down. Write that down. Write that down. All right. Three games for you, Henry, or stuff that caught your eye at all. Anything you want to talk about? So I think, interestingly, one of the games that most caught my eye was the first game back from all-star break mm. May, uh, March 11th, which is, if you guys don't know the one year anniversary of the shutdown of the NBA, when Rudy Gobert tested positive, that was also the day Tom Hanks tested positive for COVID and kind of that's kind of the day the world flew into a frenzy, at least here mm. in the United States. Yes. Um, so that day we get Nets Celtics, Ugh. which I think it's interesting because the Celtics, if they could start off the post all-star break with a win against the Brooklyn Nets, I think that'd be huge for their confidence going forward. You'd have to say that's huge for their confidence going forward. Would you disagree? Uh, it, no, it's going to be huge for their confidence. And it's it just shows where I'm at with the Celtics right now because I haven't even, even looked at that game as something worth it. Because if you can't beat the Pelicans, the Hawks, the Mavs, you can't beat those teams. They're going to lose by 30 to the Nets unless, <laughs> but I, I, your point's valid. Unless they start playing harder, they're toast. But to your point, a win against the Nets does so much for the Celtics. I think going forward into the second half of the year, a loss against the Celtics eh, doesn't really do much for the Nets. It doesn't really change where the Nets are heading, but the Celtics, they're going to be in desperation mode. And but at this rate, Henry, I mean, the Celtics have five, you know, they have a tough, tough, you know, five games, including the game after the all-star break. Who knows? They might already be toast by then. I don't know. I, I'm, we're not talking Celtics really today no. because we're taking a break. We're taking a break. I talked way too long last time. And frankly, I could say so much more, but the Celtics will win by two or lose by 22. <laughs> so another game that I have my eye on Thursday, March 25th, Lakers, 76ers battle of the two MVP front runners TNT 10 o'clock in Los Angeles 10 o'clock Eastern uh, I'm just excited to see how LeBron and Embiid sort of is it going to be like a personal thing between them two or are they both going to like 
try extra super hard to like make a statement that no, I'm the MVP. I mean, this is assuming those are still the two favorites when that game comes up a little over a month from now, which I would assume they probably would be, or at least still right in the conversation. And that also might be a game Anthony Davis is back for because Mm -hmm. he's out until at least the all-star break. We know all-star break ends March 11th and that game's two weeks after that. So again, we'd, we'd hope we could see him, but also we don't want the Lakers to rush him back. To your point about who's going to show off or be like, I'm MVP, I'm MVP. I don't think LeBron, I think LeBron is well past doing that. I don't see him going. I think he's just going to play well because he wants to play well. Embiid could go off or could stink because he's going to try to show that he's the MVP of this league, no doubt. It's been his, he said it, that it's his goal to an MVP. He's going to show off and try to show that he is the best player in the league right now. That could work really well for the Sixers. It's working up. It's worked up until this point, but it could also backfire, especially because with some teams and some players after the all-star game, there's always a funk. There's always something a little off. It's bigger in baseball than it is in the NBA, but it is in the NBA to an extent as well. So we'll see. I'm excited for it, but I don't know what's going to happen. I think it's going to be Embiid trying to show that he's the MVP, which could work or could be bad. I think it depends a lot on if Anthony Davis plays or not, because I think if he does play, that is obviously a big defensive presence in the paint there to stop Joel Embiid. And if not, like, Marcus Hall is still an okay, like he's still a passable, serviceable defender in the post, mm. even at his advanced age. But like, if you watch the Lakers, he's not the player. He, he, he won a defensive player of the year award in 2013. He was amazing. And he's not even close to that. Although he's still okay. I love how you said his advanced Mont- age. <laughs> Sounds like he's 90. <laughs> no, he's, like he's 34. 34. He's 34 or 35, I think. <laughs> And Montrezl Harrell, as we all know, is not a very good defender in the post. So it'd be actually interesting to see if Anthony Davis isn't able to go in that game. If like maybe LeBron would try and guard Embiid. In the that post. would be kind of. I don't cool. think he'd do a gr- great job of it, but it, I think it'd be interesting. It'd be fun to watch. That would be kind of cool. Uh, that that's cool. I, that gets me excited. Actually, I kind of dig that. <laughs> I dig that. And then uh, you got anything else? Any other games you want to talk about? Yes. So. There is a game that I would love to see Dallas against the Knicks, the Knicks on ESPN Friday, April 16th. I want to see Luca taking on this Knicks team who I hope, I hope still is in that playoff conversation yep. in mid April. And you know, it's Luca. It's the Knicks. Like it's just, it's just going to be fun to watch. Like, cause Luke is a fun player to watch and the Knicks are a fun team to watch. So that's a game that I, I'd be looking forward to as well. Porzingis Again, there's so many the really, yeah. Porzingis back. That'd be, I mean, hopefully there'd be fans back by then to I mean, move the I hell mean, out of them. Luca realistically might put up 60. Like some, there's something about guys to like send a message. Like I am here. They put up 50 plus in the garden against the Knicks. So many guys have done that to be like, this is my time. I could see Luca going off Mm -hmm. hearing Mike Breen being like, bang, bang. (laughs) That's going to be sick. I can't wait for that. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, Just games just look better at the garden. Like it's it's, it's just a lot of fun to watch basketball games there. And Luca is, he's big time. He's just, he's also a fun player to watch and he's been amazing this season. So I'd love to see him going up against that, uh, that tough, hard nosed Tibbs defense. Listen, I love the way the Knicks are playing too. I mean, shout out to my buddy, Jason, who likes the show, you know, his Knicks team, good team. They play well. I like the way they play. They They, they got an all-star. They got an all-star baby. Julius Randall. Good for, good for them. Good for them. I'm happy. Yeah, good for him, good for them. But yeah, the Knicks are uh they're in tenth place right now. So they're mm-hmm. knocking on the door. They're in that log jam of East teams trying to get into the playoffs right now. Yeah. So another one of those log jam teams is the Toronto Raptors. As we mm-hmm. all know, the Raptors are not playing in Toronto due to COVID travel restrictions. They've been playing in Tampa Bay of all places. So pretty much every game is a road game to them in a way, which really puts them at a disadvantage. And I think kind of explains why they started off so poorly. They just had trouble adjusting to, you know, living with your families in a rental house in the greater Tampa Bay, Pensacola area. If is, 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 Pensac- is Pensacola near Tampa Bay? I don't, uh, know. I don't, I don't, I'm not really a Florida yeah. geography expert, I, but I, I will say being in Florida, 
Being in Tampa Bay is probably fun right now. Title Town USA down there. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. <laughs> so just saying. the Raptors started off so poorly, but have really been picking it up as of late. So they lost two in a row to Miami and Philadelphia. But before that, they have won nine out of their last 11 games. They've been really picking it up. Fred Van Vliet's been playing awesome. Norman Powell has been playing really, really well. He he looks like he's a very serviceable two guard in today's NBA. They miss Kyle top. Lowry basically up until those two losses against Philly and Miami. And it's good to have him back. He's still the most important player on that team. Chris Boucher has been good for them. Pascal Siakam, while disappointing after given what he did last year, like he's still a very good player. He's just not an all-star starter like he was in 2020. Something happened to Pascal Siakam. I've said this before in the bubble. I mean, it just not the same guy. He, I mean, against Miami the other night, he played, he got benched in the fourth quarter. Like he just played bad. He can't shoot the three ball. Um, He's under 30% from, you know, behind the arc. I mean, it just something happened. I think when Siakam is on, he's a great player. I mean, people forget this is the guy that's what was an all-star starter last year. And when he's off, though, he is terrible. He is awful. He just is like a very predictable offensive player. That's pretty mm-hmm. much it. Defenses kind of know what he's going to do. But, yeah. for the, but for the Raptors, they have a very easy schedule coming up over the course of the next 10 or so games. They have Houston – Two against Chicago, two against Detroit, a Charlotte, Atlanta, Boston, which might be a very winnable game now. Then they have Utah, but then after that, (sighs) Cleveland and Houston again. So really the next 12 games, you could see them winning nine or 10 of them and really catapulting themselves up to a place where I don't know if they're Milwaukee, Brooklyn, or Philadelphia, but I wouldn't be shocked to see right week or so two weeks after the all-star break Toronto's in fourth place in the Eastern conference, not out of the question at all. Toronto on paper should not be a good basketball team. I've said that a lot. I said that last year, that team last year should not have been good. (laughs) They are well coached and they play hard. What an anomaly that must be for a basketball team. I rest my case, but this team, this Toronto team, Similar to Miami, because we're not talking about Miami right now. That'll be in a future discussion. But Miami's knocking on the door, too. Miami's in the playoffs. Like, they're in right now. So both of those teams that had great years last year but started really poorly are right there. The question is, will Toronto move Kyle Lowry? Because you talked about he's been out for a while. They played well. Norman Powell is playing as a very good serviceable two-guard. Kyle Lowry is, I think, 35, or he's turning 35, last year of his contract. Do you think, because I agree with you, he's probably the most important player on that team. He's the greatest Raptor who's ever done it. Do you think they're going to move him before the deadline? I think they should, but I don't think they will. Mm. I, I don't think they will. I don't see it, because if you're Nick Nurse, you're in a situation where you see the Eastern Conference, you see how weak it is, and you've beaten Milwaukee in the playoffs before, Mm -hmm. you've beaten Philadelphia in the playoffs before. And then you see Brooklyn as a team that has immense talent, but also has these flaws that everybody knows and are easily identifiable. And I think Nick nurse sees that and bets on himself that I could scheme up a team and a, and an offense that could beat that small lineup of the Brooklyn nets and could take advantage of it. So let's just do, so I agree with that. The Raptors key. They also went small. They went small ball. Aaron Baines was brutal yeah, for a while. He, he I, has not looked good for them. But and the, now he, yeah, he's kind of fallen out of the rotation more. They, they're they going small as well. So getting him out, and then even when he's in now, he's been better. But the small ball rotation, the small ball lineup for Toronto has worked really well. I mean, I think at first what happened was they were down Gasol and Serge Ibaka. And so those are two, you know, big names. And trying to fill those roles is difficult. They've since adjusted, kind of changed their identity a little bit. Again, changing identity gets a long, goes a long way in the <laughs> NBA. They've changed identity a bit. And at this point, I'm going to make a prediction. Can I make a prediction? Yeah, go for it. The Raptors will not finish below sixth in the East this season. They will not finish below sixth. So they can be six or above. They won't be lower than that. They will I, I, be I in the playoffs. They will be I agree in the playoffs. with that. Do you think they could be higher? Could they be fifth? I, I Listen, I think they could go as – I could see them at three. 
I could see them surpassing Milwaukee. Wow, that's a hot take. I don't see them. I think it's for them. It's between four and six. But I think if, all likelihood there. I think them, Indiana, Miami, and Boston mm-hmm. are like gonna be four through seven, just in whatever order you want, because those are just those teams are head and shoulders talent wise above the Charlottes and the Atlantas and the Knicks and the yeah. Chicago Bulls. So I think that's how it's gonna shake out. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, the Raptors. I mean, again, they looked like they were toast. Looked like they were too old, but. Nick Nurse has kind of gotten the guys playing well. And I agree. Fred Van Vliet is awesome. He's, he's a, a great, great I don't think he's an all-star this year, but he's, he had a case. He, he had, had a case. case. He had the guard a case. depth in this league is just so, so deep right now. And yeah. the fact that the all-star starters and Ben, like the, the actual voting and non wild card positions, only two guards and three front court players. So it really like lends itself to more, big men being chosen that may not be deserved. So like, I think there would be a credible case to put Fred Van Vliet in over Nikola Vucevic, but Vucevic got in because he's a big man. And listen, big men are getting in right now because of the way the rosters are constructed. And I think just, just one more point, not about Van Vliet, but with the Raptors, you know, the way their rosters constructed, they were expecting OG and Anobi to really, pick up the slack and OG hasn't been hasn't been that good this year but they're still in a good position with him not playing well so who's to say they can't go further if he starts to play well I mean this is the guy who and I'm gonna give my friend Omar credit for this take OG and Anobi killed the Celtics (laughs) even though they won that series since OG and Anobi hit that shot the Celtics have not been the same even though they did win that series they have not been the same but enough about that I don't even know about the Celtics OG and Anobi has not played well, and the team is still in pretty comfortable position right now. If he starts to play well and Norman Powell stays hot, I mean, yeah, look out. This team is in good shape. Nick Nurse is a great coach, so they'll go as far as they if he really takes them, I guess. You're muted, my friend. So <laughs> there we go. Tech difficulties. Wah, wah, wah. All right. You're not going to hear this on the podcast. This is only for the YouTube. YouTube watchers. it's staying on. YouTube it's staying on. <laughs> so we discussed a little bit of in-game action, future action. Let's talk a little bit about the digital, the online, the the not on the court yeah. sort of. We're talking, of course, about of NBA course. Top Shot. Now, CJ, when did you first learn well, about it's, NBA it's a trick. Top that's Shot. a trick question because I still don't know what it is. I've just seen it on Twitter, all over the place, and it I. I I've seen it everywhere, but I have no idea what it is. Is it like cards? Is it like a Rubik's cube? Is it like a highlight show? What is it? <laughs> so, so it's essentially digital trading cards. And like actual trading cards, like you buy packs, you open them up and they have like mm. highlights in them. And they could be different highlights. Like some would be like, oh, a uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, like fast break dunk is like probably like, so, okay, level one. But then you get ones that are like Anthony Davis game-winning shot against the Denver Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals. Like, those are the higher, more, uh, the higher level ones, the ones that so are is worth it more like, money. You just basically described a highlight. So, is it like you watch the highlight and then it's like a card? How does that work? See, this is the best explainer for it. So, people kind of say like, oh, why Top Shot? Like, why would I spend... $500 on a video that I can literally go to youtube.com, type in the highlight and see. But then people also pose like, why would you buy a trading card that has a picture and stats that you could find on the internet as well? <gasps> and it's just, <laughs> it's just sort of like, it's trying to create a marketplace. And the marketplace is almost entirely mm-hmm. online, all digital. Like you can't, you can't print out the highlight, print it out and <laughs> mail it to a friend who wants it. <laughs> um, so I think when you put it in those terms, like comparing it to trading cards, it kind of makes a lot of sense because that's really what it is. It's just instead of players, it's highlights. And So I don't mean to cut you off. So let me ask this though. I'm watching the highlight. Now the digital card, does it look like a card? It's like a it looks like a it's 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 a cube and it like ver- turns and stuff yeah kind of if you ever if anyone's ever watched any of john boy's videos on youtube what he does with his animations it looks very much so like that <laughs> is it like 
Uh, Anthony Davis inbounds the ball, gets the ball, he shoots and he scores. It like freezes on him celebrating and like that's the card or is it like? No, it's it's just the and video. It's just going it around the whole time so I could watch it all day. Okay, yeah. so let me ask you this then. So it's it's about moments. It's not about the player, but the player is the moment. Yeah. Okay, whoa. There's value in this, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, there are cards going for multiple thousands of dollars. And if some legendary tier, like there's like the top Tim Hardaway highlight, let's just say like a, a good fine player. Like the top Tim Hardaway highlight that you could find is going for like three, four thousand dollars. That's compared to like the top like LeBron highlights, which are probably going for in the well into the six Jeez. figures. For so then highlight. the people at Top Shot just cut highlights, put them in the cube, and then they sell it and make bank. Kind of. Well, yeah, in a way, but like, like could I, could I see a highlight from tonight's game on Top Shot tomorrow? Is it that quick of a turnaround or is it a little more delayed? I don't think it's that okay. quick of a turnaround. I think it takes a little bit more of a delay. Like they already have a lot of like this season's highlights, but I don't think like you could see the highlights from yesterday go up today. But what's actually interesting about it is that I don't think the top shot itself is making that much money off of it because you only pay, it's like actual trading cards. Like when you buy a pack at like a trading card store, which is increasingly difficult to do these days. Like if you buy a pack, you're getting the same price, whether or not it's for like regular average cards in there that really don't have much value or one Luka Doncic rookie that's worth $3,000. So you don't know what you're really getting because yeah. you buy them in packs. Yeah. Okay. So the money to be made is in the resale market like it is in trading mm -hmm. cards. So if I have a very, I've been very entrepreneurial lately, trying to make that money, get that <laughs> bank, stay tuned. But if you were advising me, and I want to do this for content, should I get into the top shot game or the trading card game? I personally, I have a top shot account. I have not bought anything because also packs, like they sell out. Like you have to get them like trading cards. Like when the trading cards drop, like they sell out really quickly, much like the packs in top shot. So if you want to commit to like actually making sure, you know, when the packs drop and whatnot and making sure you're on your computer so you could buy one, then yeah, go for it. But it's probably as much of a commitment as it is like going to Target to buy trading cards. Okay, so I just want to say something. Your tone there suggested that you don't think I'm going to be committed to it. Now, let's just, I'm committed. <laughs> I'm committed, my guy. Okay, I'll do it. And listen, you could be trading card grandpa. I'll be young buck top shot, okay? Trading card <laughs> grandpa. Call me young buck top shot. Listen, we're going to take it over. Well, we're not taking it over, but we're going to, Make some money off of it. Make some freaking content. Let's do it. Young Buck Top Shot CJ is born today, February 26th, 2000, yep, 2021. I've been born. All right. Let's do it. I'm committing. Give me your account. I'm taking it over, Get baby. Get your own account. <laughs> you, you already have. Does it cost money? No, to make an account is free, but it costs money to buy the packs. Oh, well, okay, fine. Well, I really have an account, but you're not going to use it. It's going to be, it's a dormant account. Fine, fine. It could be the joint ballers account. How about fine. that? Fine. I like all that. Right. Think of all the people trying to get in and you're like, I'm not going to use it. Perfect. <laughs> so Henry, trading cards and stick around. We might have some trading card content coming down the pipeline in the future, folks. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, now, we'll have, now we'll have some Top Shot content as well. All right. Now what's coming down the pipeline? Some absolute heat. You know him. You love him. He's an animal. He's a king. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Swass is here. Let's rock and roll. Hit it. Joey Swass is here. Joey, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Sorry about your boys taking an L last night, but it's okay. We're not talking about it, Joe. Stop. Yo, look at that. Look at that posture you got. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm looking at, um, I was looking at my phone because I just have so many things I want to share with you guys. <laughs> so, so you go brought you on for heaters and freezers. So let's, let's just skip it. 
skip all the nonsense. Let's get right to the takes. What's your first hot, hot take? Oh, my first hot take. Um, if Trey Young wasn't an All Star, uh, okay, wait. This is actually this is actually kind of a weird one. I said that Chris Middleton didn't or like doesn't deserve to be an All Star if Trey Young also isn't an All Star because I don't think Chris Middleton's better than Trey Young. That's a freezer because I think a lot of people agree that Trey Young's a better player than Chris Middleton. Because but it's not no about the other people. It's about you two. <laughs> you two agree. A, well, first of all, real quick, Joe, put, put that mic back a little bit, my guy. All right. Oh, sorry. Hold, sorry. Hold back a little bit. Yeah. Freezer. <laughs> that's ice cold. I mean, that's. I think Chris Middleton gets an All Star appearance because the Bucks are usually the best team in the East. Yeah. So give him the credit that he may or may not deserve. Trey Young is an absolutely better player than Chris Middleton. Except Chris Middleton can actually play defense. Yeah. So I don't think it's a heater, Joe. I think it's a freezer. I mean, this is your first heaters freezers that we've actually recorded. So let's mm, see if you bring the heat. Yeah. Um, I don't see the Jazz making it out the first round. <laughs> the first <laughs> round. Heater. That's a heater. Yeah. That's a that's a ridiculous heater take. Oh my good. Explain the first yourself. Round. Smokey the Bear, explain yourself. Uh, they're just there. I just don't see them as a playoff team. They're they're a regular season team. Who are they gonna lose to? Tell the dog. Tell Ginger to be quiet. Who hold on, my do- dog is barking. Um, just hold on. Let that let that sit for a sec. Let that settle. Let that settle. The Jazz are, are just a regular season team that will lose in the first round. Yes, I to don't who? see them. To who? Uh, whoever they're going against, I don't see them. I don't see them beating any playoff team. Dude, so something's, something's just... up with your mic, Joe. Like your mic is like giving me a lot of static. Maybe try and <laughs> maybe try uh, and plugging it and plugging it back in. How's that? Much there better. we go. Yeah, that's good. So much better. So your take is just rooted in no stats. You just have a feeling. <laughs> you just feel. I mean, you guys can. I don't. I don't. I don't need stats. They're they're not making it out the first round. So let's right. say they play that's, Dallas, that's, 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 Golden that's, State. That's not a. That's not a prediction. That's a fact. Wow. A prediction. Okay. That's a heater, Joe. Good that's job. a heater. I did right. massively disagree. Big how big many, heater. How many takes you got, Joe? You got five. You got three. What are we looking at? I have five. Beauty. What's number three? Um. Without Anthony Davis, Lakers are currently in shambles. That's a heater because shambles is a different definition, I think, for different teams. Like shambles for the Lakers is just like we might get the three seed and we're not as efficient on offense. Like they're still a really good team. Listen. I mean, they suck but right now, but that's because they're also missing Schroeder and LeBron shooting like 14% from three-pointer over the last three games is like – They've been playing horribly, like that's for sure, but I don't think they're in shambles. They're for sure teams in shambles. Uh, one is in my backyard, but the Lakers aren't that team. I think they're going to fall in the standings to fourth maybe before AD comes back, but then they'll be fine. LeBron's not worried. I'm not worried. So that is a, that's a heater, Joe, um, but I think they will be ultimately be fine. Um, Let's see. What else do I got? Also, oh, yes. like LeBron – his teams generally tend to have this mid February lull. Like it didn't happen last year with the Lakers, but when he came back uh, his first season with LA and he said, Oh, I'm going into playoff mode. And then the Lakers were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and then the season before his last season with the Cavaliers after remember when they made all of those insane trades, like, Oh, get Isaiah Thomas out of here. Like, Oh wait, we're bringing in Rodney hood. And they like literally completely remade that roster because they were struggling so much. Uh, bringing in Jordan Clarkson, bringing in Larry Nance, that team, like they were struggling for a couple months stretch and not a couple months stretch, about a month stretch. And that's kind of a theme with LeBron James teams. They tend to go through these like mid season, like doesn't look like they're playing that hard. And every year the media is just like, is, is LeBron's team going to, make it out of the second round. Like, does LeBron know what he's doing? And the number one thing that they always say is LeBron playing too many minutes. And I trust LeBron James to manage his own body more than I trust any person on this podcast, any podcast, any television show. 
I think he knows what he's doing. I think he knows how to treat his body, how to manage minutes, manage his workload. I think the Lakers are going to be okay. I would agree. It's also this. We're soon going to be in this. If AD's out for a long time and other guys get hurt, we'll be really flirting with that dangerous Twitter moment where it's like, is this LeBron's weakest roster <laughs> ever? And then they'll show that like Cavaliers team where like the second best player was like Daniel Gibson. And it was like Verjao. And, and I hate that time of year. It's the worst time of year. Um, before we keep going, Joe, are you okay? Yeah. Why? You seem sad. You, are, you look like a little huddy. I right just now. keep so just... fixing my hair. Um, you look like little huddy. I don't know. Are you upset? <laughs> I think it's just because I'm wearing a black hoodie. I think that's mm. that's it. Okay. So uh, what else you got for us, big guy? Um, Celtics best player is Marcus Smart, and they don't have Marcus Smart. So <laughs> I, <laughs> That's a heater, but I might agree with that. Maybe not best player, <laughs> but most important player. Like This is a nightmare. The drive that he instills in that team, how hard he gets the other – guys on that roster to play like he's better than Kemba no question more valuable than Kemba not a doubt he's no question the third best player on that team I don't put him above don't, Tatum and Brown but like might be close listen be close. it's it, uh, pass what does that even mean I just don't <laughs> want to talk about it it's a take it's a take I don't want to talk about this um fifth and final take uh, I, I know, I know in the, uh, the, the very first one where I shared my first heaters and freezers, I was all for Christian Wood, most improved player, but there's a certain man in the NBA who's changed my mind because Christian Wood's been out with injury. Jordan Clarkson for most improved player. I don't know if that's really a heater. It's just kind of a take, but with Christian Wood missing all this time, uh, I think Jordan Clarkson has a really good shot at winning it. I would put some ice in that drink because that's a freezer in my opinion. He's playing <laughs> awesome. He's excellent. He's been huge for the Jazz team. He's playing out of his mind. He's shooting the ball really well. I think that's a great take, Joe. I agree it's a, it's freezer. a freezer take, but also I'd like to pose this question to you now. Would you have him winning most improved and sixth man of the year? Yeah, there's in my opinion, I don't think there's another notable sixth man because Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, or no, Montrez Harrell's been okay, but Lou Williams, classic six man of the year, has not been playing that well. So. Yeah, I think, honestly, like, that's the one award you could say might be – you could award today. Like, I think Jordan Clarkson's six man of the year is pretty easy. Yeah, so maybe most improved would go somewhere else. But, like, Jeremy Grant maybe, or there's some – like, you can even argue, like, Jalen Brown's made a leap. There's definitely guys who've improved this year. But Jordan Clarkson, basically, this isn't your take, Joey, but we'll just amend the take. He'll win an award <laughs> for what? I don't know, but he'll get an award. Yeah, he's definitely getting something on awards tonight. No question. And deservedly so. He's been and great. And deservedly. Deservedly so. All right. Switching gears. It's time. This is only on YouTube and IGTV. So if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, pause that podcast. It's time. Go check us out on YouTube. Go check us out on IGTV. It's time for Friday Food. by nobody all right <laughs> all right joe friday fits right. time you sent us the fits i did and uh i as you can see there's a certain oh my theme God. surrounding didn't. it he did with how, not with how bad the celtics have been right lately i want to bring it back to better times um, so this is a larry bird larry theme. bird most of these are pretty pretty old photos yeah, i can tell the oldest one is <laughs> The oldest one is this retirement photo, I think. Yeah. All right. So we're starting at the top, right? With him and MJ. Yeah. We're starting at the top. Um, that MJ fit has actually been in the last Friday fits. I don't know. If yeah. I was about to say, before. I recognize it. True. But you have dripped out MJ and then you have <laughs> homeless Larry Bird McDonald's commercial. <laughs> Five out of 10. Who did this? Five Who costumed him? Like that person should be fired. MJ looks sick. And then Larry Bird looks like he just took out the garbage. That's not fair to Larry. That's, that's... <laughs> He's wearing just basketball shorts and a white-ish off gray sort of tank top. 
Two out of ten. Larry, no drip. Come on, man. <laughs> That's Two not out of fair. 10. I just can't believe they did that to him because I'm a Celtics. If my dad saw this photo, by the way, he'd be like, it's the best photo I've ever seen. 11 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, to this day, believes Larry Bird's the greatest who's ever done it. That being said, that's no, a four. That's not true. That's like you go to the beach, but you're hungover. That's what he looks like. It's like, oh, I'm going to the beach. I don't lift. I'm hungover, but I'm going to wear a tank. And he's probably going to get a vicious sunburn. Four. Da- or CJ, I, bl- I thought, no. Dad doesn't think Larry's the best to ever do it. He said um, Bill Russell's the best to ever do it. Oh, and then uh, Larry, and then John Havlicek, yeah. right? Those yeah. Probably... And then Danny Ainge. No, no, Danny Kevin Ainge. McHale. My dad goes, the, the skill Kevin McHale had. No player has as much skill today as Kevin McHale had. It's the worst <laughs> take I've ever heard. <laughs> Heater undersells that. All right. So, yeah, tough start for Lair Bear. Let's see. What we got for number two, Joe? Um, number two, uh, it's not really – like the outfit obviously sick but just like the photo in general like magic johnson wearing this boston celtic shirt under his little jumpsuit i think this photo is epic i think larry bird looks epic retirement game i don't even know looks freaking epic i'll give it a nine out of ten i think larry bird looked sick in the old celtics unis i thought he like that's those warm-ups he looks good in those warm-ups those are a classic 1980s warm-up jacket pants combo nine out of ten can't go wrong with it. It's great. It's gonna, really good. I'm going to knock it, though. It, this isn't Larry's fault. It's actually more on you, Joe. I mean, it, it's not called, you know, picture-perfect boys talk pictures. It's it's Friday Fits, and I'll give him an eight because I know the picture's epic, but it's fit. It's fits an eight. <laughs> All right. For the third fit, this is this is just – I mean, no man had this oh. this good of sty. Oh. I don't think any man had this good of sty. I mean, this oh. guy got basketball in his hand. He's basically sitting all over these iconic Celtics. What what are these called? Like varsity jackets? Are these varsity jackets? Yeah, like yeah. Letterman jackets, bomber jackets, like something. Letterman like that. jackets. Uh, and he's wearing boot cut blue jeans with uh, light brown tannish boots. It appears for the for the youngins out there, this is basically just like sitting on a pile of like Bape hoodies or Supreme hoodies. This is basically what Larry Bird is doing, but like the 1980s version. So I'll give this like an 8.5 out of 10. Henry, you can go first. Six. I'm going to go six. I, I don't like the pants. I don't like the pants. You don't like the pants? What? Oh, my yeah. Lord. Pants don't work. Dude, the pants, it's boot six. cut jeans, and he's wearing boots. Henry, you would wear those boots, guy. You're just jealous. I think I actually own something like those, actually. <laughs> Henry, Greek. Yeah, and I would fully admit, if I was walking around wearing a very similar outfit, I'd say, that's a fine, not great outfit. What? That's a sick guy. <laughs> Henry, you need to recreate that outfit if you have boots like that and jeans like that at home. I probably do somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Make a mess of all your dirty clothes and then just sit on it with, like, a regular jacket with Ew. a basketball. What do you mean? I'm just saying. Anyways... I think this is a sick photo. I'm giving it a nine. I love the the green jacket's awesome. The way he commands attention is awesome. And if you saw, like, if someone wore that walking in the arena, they were gonna do damage. They meant business. If you see a guy about to, walks in wearing cowboy boots, hits the floor wearing Converse, run. That's He's dropping heard. forty. He's dropping <laughs> forty. Forty points. <laughs> That's a nine. Great job, Larry. All right. Next, this is this is one of my all time favorite. Larry Bird fits and Larry Bird photos in general. I mean, the light blue Indiana State mm. uh, hush, hushing the audience. Mm. This is an easy 10. This is a 10 for me. I agree. 10. Yeah. The Indiana State uniforms were so cool. I love baby blue. Yeah, I'm going to give it an 11 just to be different. I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a jersey you see if you're tailgating, you're at the beach. You know, that is a top five frat party jersey. Oh, yeah. easily. Indiana State Larry Bird, no question. You see that out. Like, and the fact that uh, I always forget that Larry Bird played at Indiana State. Yes, sir. Like, Coach you don't hear Coach. Indiana State these days. And Larry Bird, the just Sycamores, went there, just went there and was epic. And it's a great photo. Again, the blue is sick. The pants actually aren't, the shorts are, like, oh, eh, I think. Uh, but. I'll give it a 10. I'm sorry, an 11 for being different. And yeah, that's epic. But yeah, I will say though, it's a common jersey. But if you're in the market for a new jersey, one, like maybe give some money elsewhere. You know, people might need it more. But two, <laughs> don't get the Larry Bird Indiana State. I mean, it's kind of been done before, you know, it's kind of overdone. All right, final fit. Ah, uh, jeez. This is. Oh, this isn't right. 
This is a negative five out of ten. He's a boy. He's a uh, boy. His mother. Bro. His mother needs to learn how to dress this man better. He. She needs to dress three-time MVP better. This is a negative five. He's a boy. He's a boy in this. It's still picture. bad. It's He's still a boy. Bad. We can't be. I don't want to judge this. You don't know his story. You don't know what kind of day he was. It's a child. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> You're not even going to give it a rating. I mean, it's a. It's. Uh, Fine. Horrible. I'll give it a five because it's like a fine outfit for a little kid. It's a the five. hair terrible. Yeah, the, the hair sweater fine. The sweater for that fine. era it's too. Five. That's a six and a half seven. I mean, here's what here's the take, Joey. I'm gonna put a, put a picture of you as a child next to Larry Bird, and <laughs> we'll let the people decide who looks better, young Larry or young Joey. It's Dude, be close. young young Joe is smacking different. I I look different. Back in the day. <laughs> Breaking news, Joey Swass. Do you believe you're more handsome than Larry Bird in general? Um, uh, hmm. Oh, man, that's a tough question. Uh, He's thinking about it. Seven. So when Larry Bird was in the NBA, I, I found him to be a very handsome gentleman. Pause. But now and like before he was even in college, he's kind of grody, in my so, opinion. I'm. I'm so I'm, I'm, I think I, me at 18 was more handsome than Larry Bird at 18. That's my wow, take. Wow. That's so you think right now you're more handsome than Larry Bird in that picture where he's shushing. Interesting. Is he 18 in that? I don't think he's 18 in that photo. Yes, he is. No, he's probably like eight. No, not that photo. No, the we're talking about the Indian estate. Oh, oh, I thought you meant the, the little kid. The Indian estate looks 18. like he's been in the plumbers union for like five plus years already. I mean, yeah, he supports work. Exactly. Good for him. We come he's from a family the- of plumbers, Joe. Our family are plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> Except our father, who's an accountant. But our family are plumbers, Joe. <laughs> so you believe, I just want to get this in writing. You think you right now or better looking than Larry Bird when he was your age. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Joey Swass, everybody. Bring in the that, heat. That's the hottest. That's more hot than any of your heaters or freezers. Joey Swass, bring in the heat, bring in the fits. Joey, you're a king. Happy Friday, buddy. Thank you as always, my dude. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me again. Peace. I hate it here. Thanks for being on, Joe. See you later, man. <laughs> All right, everyone. It's Friday. You know what that means. Grab your beers. It's time, it's time for, for three, three cheers. cheers. That go, was so baby. bad. I tried to match you. <sighs> DJ, Real what you quick. drinking right now? Drinking Bud Light. Bud Ooh. Latte. I'm drinking a Montauk Brewing Company India Pale Ale. Wellfleet Water, as Omar's cousin would say. <laughs> um, yeah, drinking Bud Light. Just a real quick thing. We are, you know, listen, we do three cheers every Friday. I think from my understanding, people like it. We yeah. like it, but people like it. So if you're launching a beer company or you're into the liquor game and you're looking to you know, get your company out there or you deliver it or something, just saying, we have some ad space here. Yeah, we'll, we'll promote your beer. We have some ad space for this part of the show. That's all I'll say, just for this part. All right, um, so CJ, I'm going to go yeah. with my first cheers. Let's hear it. My first cheers... To Stan Van Gundy, head coach of the Pelicans, finally running point Zion. And he is awesome. Zion's a great point guard. He's averaging like 27, 5, and 5. He's not rebounding as much because he's not getting those down below offensive rebounds that we're used to. He's playing better on defense. Not Still not good. <laughs> no one would mistake him <laughs> for a good defender. He still has misses a lot of rotations. But switching Zion to playing point guard, facilitating the ball, running pick and roll, which is really interesting to watch. I'm going to give it up to Stan Van Gundy. Give a little cheers to him for making that adjustment and maybe saving the Pelican season. Cheers, Stan. Cheers, cheers to the camera. I'm not sure if that's going to stick or not. Okay, <laughs> to Stan. All right, my first cheers is going to go to Mike Gorman. Mike Gorman is the Celtics play-by-play announcer. He's been calling games for like – 40 years for the Celtics. Mike Gorman went on the radio a couple days ago here in Boston and trashed the Celtics, mainly Tatum and Brown. So this cheers is twofold. We've never done an angry cheers. And I'm not saying this is an angry cheers. Jason and Jalen are my guys. Do they know that? No, but they're my guys. 
if Mike Gorman trashing them on the air motivates them to have a better rest of the year, cheers to you, Mike. Thank you for what you did. However, (laughs) not so fast. If him going on the radio pisses them off, makes them feel alienated from the organization and makes them want to leave, and this is the beginning of the end of the Celtics, then screw you, Mike Gorman. (laughs) Cheers to you for screwing this thing up. But... I don't know which one it's going to be. So in the meantime, to Mike Gorman, a great legend, a legend of the game. Cheers to Mike Gorman. All right. Cheers to Danny Ainge for not pulling the trigger on the Anthony Davis trade when he could have in 2018 and allowing Davis to come to the Lakers. And we've seen what his absence does for that Lakers team and how great he is. So cheers to him for allowing LeBron to get the best teammate he's ever had. Thank you, Danny. Cheers to you. Cheers to you for not making that move. It always happens. You always attack me. (laughs) I'm nothing but nice to you. I'm only nice to you. And you just do that. I mean, just real quick. Anthony Davis didn't want to play in Boston because of Danny Ainge. Now he treated Isaiah Thomas. God damn. All right, all right, I'm fine, I'm fine. My second cheers, oh, this hurts, it's to Danilo Gallinari. <laughs> Gallinari against the Celtics on Wednesday had 10 three-pointers, 10. It's one a Clay zero. Thompson number. He put up 38 points. Shout out to Big Jim Murray from Felger and Maz, 985 The Sports Hub. He tweeted out, Gallinari hasn't scored this many points since April 10th, 2015. That night, I think he scored like 46 or 48 points in 2015. That's almost six years ago. Danil Gallinari moves like the Michelin man in cement. He's slow. He should not be good at basketball, but he is. And on top of that, April 10th, 2015, Henry, you were 17. You were still in high school. I was still in high school. And that was my friend Jackson's 18th birthday. Shout out to Jackson. Go Bulls. The fact that Danilo Gallinari torched the Celtics, and I just, uh, I'm not talking about it. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Cheers, Danilo Gallinari. Congrats, buddy. You're not that old a Michelin Manny as I thought. Cheers. Cheers, Danilo. All right, my final cheers is Tiger Woods. Oh. Cheers to Tiger. Um, oh. We're Congrats. obviously wishing the best for you. Tiger is an athlete that I grew up loving. I remember... I was at a uh, little league baseball game my team was playing and I was following the U S open 2008 against Rocco media when he was playing on a broken leg. And I remember my dad was sitting in the stands nearby as I was in the dugout, you know, playing little league baseball. And I would always go over and talk to him and be like, Hey, how's it going? Is, is, is he, is he winning? Is he winning? And him and the head coach of uh, that little league team, um were like giving me updates as it was going on and uh tiger woods is one of the greatest athletes of all time one of my favorite athletes it was such a joy to watch him win that masters two years ago i remember i was in the stacks at alderman library at uva i was supposed to be studying for one of my political theory tests and instead i was streaming the masters watching tiger get win and then the wearing his sunday red it was a lot of fun so cheers tiger uh it's sad we may not ever get to see him play and compete high level golf again but again we're just really glad that like he's going to make a full recovery and like be able to be a normal person again yeah cheers to tiger i think it's hard it's sad you know i i think if anyone's going to come back and do it it is going to be tiger um so you know i wish him and his family nothing absolutely and respect their privacy that 08 us open i remember we watched that in uh my wood shop class in middle school it was on the tv <laughs> so Cheers to Tiger. Get well soon. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, it's just shocking. It's crazy. My last cheers of this segment is to this podcast. So I kind of said it at the beginning one month ago today, we launched Boyers, not ballers. And what a month it has been. We have 10 episodes out now. You can check us out now on YouTube, Spotify, Apple. We have an Instagram page. We have a Twitter um, it's been so much, I've, I've always wanted to do something like this and I had always told Henry about it, thought it'd be a good idea. And I finally convinced him to do it. And I'm always going to be grateful for that, Henry, because this has been 
a blast to do an absolute, an absolute joy, joy. joy, an absolute joy. And to everyone that's listened or reached out or follows us, we appreciate you all so much. The fact that anyone listens to this shit show mess where we drink beers and scream is, <laughs> is wildly crazy to me. Um, but nevertheless, I'm just very grateful to that. I'm grateful for every single person who's listened, who's reached out, who's liked our post. Even if you've clicked it for 10 minutes and said, not for me, it's 10 more minutes than I probably would have thought we would have gotten. So cheers to Boyers Not Ballers. Cheers to the community of people that support us and listen to us, our families, our friends, whoever it may be. We appreciate you so much. And let me just say, we're a month in. We're not going anywhere. This is just the beginning. Big we're going things to- coming. Big things coming. Stick around. Stay tuned. Um, we have a lot that we want to do, and we can't wait to do it and share it with all of you. So one month in, cheers to many more. Cheers to you, Henry, and cheers to everyone who makes this show possible. Shout out to Joey Swass, Trader Trev, the rest. And then, of course, um, all the people that listen. We appreciate you all so much. So thank you. Cheers to you. Cheers to you guys. CJ, that was a wonderfully tender note to end this Friday show off on. And uh, again, it's been a pleasure doing this with you as well. So uh, everybody, again, we've got great games this weekend. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you check out the Friday Fits on our YouTube page. Recommend to a friend, recommend to family members. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Boyers Not Ballers. And we've got big things on the horizon. So be sure to check out. Big things coming. Yep. Episode 10 will be out on YouTube too with Friday Fits. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and thank you all. Henry, have a great weekend, my friend. You Let's as well. Let's get after it. Let's have some fun. Let's do it. Party on, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you guys.